welcome to the channel. In this video, I want to talk about the Nike Pegasus Trail 4. And I want to ask the question, have I found the perfect trail shoe? Stay tuned to find out. The Nike Pegasus Trail 4 launched in August 2022 with the standard version costing £130, 140 US dollars, and the Gore Tex variant retailing at £145 and 160 US dollars. And it's that version I'm going to be talking about today. I picked up the pair you can see behind me in March 2023 on sale for about £80. They were a bit of a punt as I had a race coming up in March, but after about six months of regular use and about 200 kilometres in them, I just wanted to share some of my thoughts. I've had a few pairs of trail shoes in my time, starting with the Brooks Pure Grit version 1 in 2014, and then moving to Solomon's Speedcross 4s from about 2017. Up until earlier this year, I mainly wore trail shoes for muddy obstacle course races, or OCRs as they're known, such as Tough Mudders, but I'd also worn them on off-road training runs and a bit on the road when runs have had mixed terrain. The Brooks Pure Grit were a bit of a starter trail shoe for me. They proved to be a bit flat and lacking in grip on OCRs and just general support. The Solomons were grippy as hell. Um, they felt really supportive, but they were not fun to wear on transitional runs between trails and road. So I was looking for a hybrid shoe that could handle both road and the trail. I've been running in Nike road shoes pretty consistently since about 2017, beginning in Nike structures, and then onto the version one of the Invincibles over the past 18 months or so, so I was keen to see what Nike offered in the trail domain. So I'd signed up to some mixed terrain races earlier this year, combining roads and trail. I'd heard promising things about the Pegasus 4 being a good trail to road shoe, so I wanted to try them out. I won't lie, the design aesthetic of them was probably a pretty big pull for me. In my opinion, they're probably the most modern design in the trail shoe market, looking much closer to a road shoe than anything else that I'd seen. And in terms of weight, the Pegasus Trail fits squarely in the middle of the pack of my three trail shoes, weighing in at 360 grams for a UK 13 compared to 394 grams for the Solomon Speedcross, so they're my heaviest pair, and 345 grams for the Brooks Pure Grit being the lightest pair. So enough about how they look and how much they weigh, let's talk a bit about how they perform. Well, straight out of the box, they were really comfy, absolutely miles ahead of my Brooks and Solomons, not just looking like a road shoe, but feeling like a pair as well. They have a nice roomy toe box and the tongue is so much better incorporated into the upper than with some other recent Nikes that I've had, such as the Invincible 3s. There's no stray fabric or stitching inside the shoe, which massively reduces the chances of rubbing, which I'd experienced in the Invincible 3s earlier this year, which ultimately resulted in their return to Nike. They contain a full length React midsole, which while being not as spongy or springy as the Nike ZoomX foam, still provides an excellent level of comfort underfoot and miles ahead of what I've experienced in other trail shoes. I found they fitted true to size, opting for my usual UK 13 size, and the foot felt really secure without having to over tighten the laces or needing to do any lace locking. I broke these trainers in on a 25k trail run in Winchester in the UK back in March, which was actually the video that started this channel. Conditions on the day were dry and the course was a combination of light trail and roads. I was amazed at how well they performed given this was my longest ever run to date. I didn't experience anywhere near the foot fatigue I was expecting and the transitions from road to trail on multiple occasions felt seamless. The gaiter collar did an amazing job at keeping any little stones and soil out of the shoe. I followed up this run with a similar and longer run, uh, including a 30 kilometer one in the Peak District in May, where the terrain was still dry, a little bit tougher, but they still performed equally well. 
To give them a bit more of a test in tougher weather conditions, I've used them on a number of the more challenging parkrun courses in my area in both icy conditions at Rutland Water and much hillier and muddier conditions at Beacon Hill and they've continued to perform incredibly well. At Glastonbury this year, they were my go-to trainer for a group run around the festival site. I'll link to that video above, as well as becoming my daily wearer, clocking up 50 kilometers of walking across the course of the week. I did take walking boots with me, but having worn them for half a day at the beginning of the festival, I switched over to the Pegasus Trail. They were so much lighter and more comfortable to be in all day. Despite the Beacon Hill mud fest, I still hadn't had the opportunity to properly test out the waterproof properties. So during the recent wet weather weeks we've had in the summer in the UK, I went on a run, found some deep puddles and I just stood in them for 30 seconds with the toe box fully submerged and no water got through to the shoe. The only wetness that did get inside the shoe got inside over the gator collar, which it's worth pointing out isn't itself waterproof. During this run, I went from road to dry trail to some freshly ploughed fields and wetter conditions. And this is when I experienced the only drawback I've experienced with the shoe so far. In some conditions, the sole was like a mud magnet. Once mud had started to accumulate on the sole, more and more just stuck to them, massively adding to the weight of the shoe and also reducing the grip. It was only at the end of the run when I blasted them off with a hose that I could get this sticky mud off. Strangely, I hadn't had this experience on Beacon Hill, which was a muddy run. So it's perhaps just a certain kind of sticky mud that was problematic and this isn't the case all the time. It's probably worth mentioning the sole of the shoe at this point. The sole compared to previous versions has got less rubber and more exposed react foam which has been a trend across other Nike shoes recently, probably as a weight saving measure. The exposed foam might be the issue here in wetter conditions, but that for me has not really been a deal breaker. So coming back to the question of, are they the perfect trail shoe? Well, if I was taken on super technical terrain with minimal roads or returning to running obstacle course races, I would probably revert back to my Solomon Speedcross 4s. With that being said, I've got no plans to spend hours on my feet in the Solomons. Based on my limited experience on tougher terrain in the Pegasus Trail, this isn't where they thrive, but as a hybrid shoe over long distances, I think I'd struggle to find a better pair for my needs. So what do you think? Have you got a perfect pair of trail shoes? Do you have a pair for all terrains or do you have different pairs for different terrains? I'd be really keen to know. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. See ya.